Today I'm here to tell you a little bit about calling coyotes. You're going to find out exactly why you want to hunt coyotes. We're going to find out the equipment required to hunt coyotes. We're going to pick out some stand strategies and we're also going to talk a little bit about seasonal um, strategies for what drives coyotes during different times of the year. This is going to be a real basic course. We're going to offer some advanced courses or if you're inclined to, you can always come out and hunt with me and spend some time with me. We've, we offer some packages for that as well. But this is just a, a beginner course to get you started on the, the world of hunting coyotes. You know, there's a lot of guys hunting coyotes out there and there's a lot of different ways to hunt. Um, you know, hunting elk, hunting coyotes, hunting deer, everybody's got their own ways. I'm just gonna give you a little overview of what works for me. I've been doing it a long time. I, I certainly can learn something. I learn something actually every time I go in the field. I mean, these coyotes, are they win way more than we do. They're surviving 365 days a year. You know, we just get to do it at our leisure. So, I don't know, this is what works for me. I hope it works for you. Uh, I look forward to hearing your stories and, and listening to what you got to say, and hopefully you'll learn something from this. So why do we call predators? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, controlling them amounts to livestock herds and deer herds, antelope herds, elk herds, and so forth. Um, we also call predators to get their fur. You know, the fur trade is a great thing. And, um, and number, number one reason for me is it's fun. You know, I, I love to be out there in the winter time and uh, calling some coyotes and bobcats. And, uh, you know, today we're gonna focus mainly on the coyotes. So uh, I'm gonna give you some strategies on, on what works. I'm gonna give you some uh, information on the kind of gear you're gonna need. And uh, I'm gonna give you some uh, sounds that you're gonna wanna use to call these coyotes in. So to get started picking your stand selections, you know, if, if you're a deer hunter and you've spent a lot of time in the woods during the fall and you, you're just kind of wanting to call coyotes uh, during the winter months, you know, you kind of already have, have done some of the legwork on knowing where these coyotes are hanging out just by seeing them and so forth. But the number one thing calling coyotes or hunting deer or killing elk is to be successful, you've got to hunt where the coyotes are. Now, for me, I like to spend a lot of time locating. I drive around and look at a lot of roads and see what kind of sign there is for coyotes. And I do a lot of intel with talking to the ranchers and guys who are out and about to hear where they're, where they're seeing coyotes and hearing coyotes. Um, another good thing is, you know, since I've been doing it in a long time, I have a reputation with a lot of the cattle ranchers where I live that call me and let me know that they're having coyote trouble. So that narrows it down for me. A lot of the times, I just, I like to hunt where the coyotes are. I don't like going in and making cold sets. Um, sometimes that works. Sometimes you drive by a place where there's, it just looks like there ought to be coyotes. But to me, I like to do the legwork. It's important to know where they're at. And that way, if you're, if you're out and about, you're gonna be calling coyotes. So the basic things you're going to need to call some coyotes, you probably have some rifles around that, uh, you know, maybe you hunt deer with and so forth. You know, when you're getting started, the main thing is don't spend a lot of money right away. You know, you can get by with your basic deer rifle that you've been uh, hunting your deer with or, uh, you know, a shotgun, depending on your, your terrain and so forth. But the main things you need are a good call, a good rifle, shooting sticks, a seat, and a set of binoculars and a rangefinder, you know? And a few of those things can be eliminated. If you got good calls, a good seat, and a good set of shooting sticks, good rifle, you're good to go there. Now that we've talked a little bit about scouting, I wanna tell you how do I pick my stance. You know, it's really important that you have a good vantage point. Um, some guys like to call close quarters. You know, and that works really good in heavy timbered country. Me, I live in open country, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I like to have a high point where I can see, you know, 360 degrees if possible. I like to have a, a wind direction in my face or crosswind because I promise you these coyotes are going to try to work the wind on you about 90% of the time. You know, they do come in hard charging occasionally right straight to the call, but you're going to darn sure want to be able to make sure you can see downwind. So the number one weapon in a coyote's arsenal, they have exceptional eyes, they have exceptional ears, but their nose is something you're never gonna beat. So you wanna make sure that when you're set up on these stands, that not only do you have good visibility, but you're watching exactly where the wind is blowing. Because 90% of coyotes are gonna work the wind and they're gonna try to get behind you. Because they, 
want to know exactly what they're coming in on. They want to know if that's really a rabbit making that sound, they're going to get downwind and see if they smell a rabbit. And if they hear it's a fawn distress, they're going to come downwind and see if it's a deer. So, you know, make sure that you always cover your back door where that wind is blowing. So to give you a quick um, idea of maybe about stand, stand selection um, and how that's going to look when you're when you're trying to call these coyotes in, say you uh, you're you're posted up on a hill. And you've got wind coming at you from this direction, and your coyotes are theoretically out here. You're posted up here with that wind coming across you, and and, and a good thing is. You left your back door. You left your back door with your pickup parked behind the hill. So you're trying to get that coyote pulled in from out there, and you're calling. You got your collar set up out here in front of you. That coyote is likely going to start working its way around you here. So you want to make sure that when you're calling you need to make sure that you can see down here into that crosswind because if you don't, that coyote's going to get behind you and you're never going to see him. This is a great situation when calling with a buddy is super critical. He's going to be sitting right there to intercept that coyote while you're watching that front part where the, where the coyotes might come right straight to the call. And the nice thing is, is when you get to go hunting with a buddy, you get to share these stories. So really when you're calling coyotes, it's a fun, fun activity to take your kids out, get them introduced to hunting, and also, you know, spend some good time in the, in the woods with your pals. So, you know, that's just a quick, quick idea of, of how to make a quick setup. All right, there's three things that basically drive coyotes to come to the call and, and survival in, in, in general is food, fighting, and sex. And with those three things, you can get them to come to you and get into range. Um, I'm gonna to touch on the food aspect of it first. Rabbit distress, fawn distress, mouse squeaks, those are the things that you're gonna to wanna to use. Those are, those are by far the most effective for a young, um, just getting started type of collar. So, let me touch on that real quick, give you a little bit of cottontail distress. We're going to go through this relatively quickly um, just to get you an idea of what these sounds are and give you a, you know, a little something to practice against um, when you first get your calls. The next will be a jackrabbit distress. These are a little bit more drawn out. You do these with an open read call. If you got a cow call in your pocket, you know, it's a, um, an easy tool to use, especially if you've been calling elk, you, you know your way around one of these open read calls. And uh, probably the most versatile hand call you can use is an open read, and my, my preferred weapon when I'm using hand calls. So a uh, quick jackrabbit distress, you just slide back and forth on the, on the read and uh, uh, bite down a little bit. And that's a super effective call just about anywhere. Um, the more rasp you put in it, uh, you know, it, it just makes it sound a little more excited and, and uh, really brings those coyotes in. And the last sound I'm going to use is a fawn distress. I like to use this in the spring and fall when those fawns have, uh, you know, are still hanging around and, and uh, the coyotes are used to eating fawns throughout the summer and, and early fall and, and it's super effective. Right, howling is probably one of the more difficult parts of calling coyotes. If you're, if you're gonna get into howling, I suggest as a rookie that you get yourself an electronic call. All of those sounds are right on the electronics. It gives you a full arsenal of something to work with. Um, if you are familiar with a diaphragm call, these are really cool. Fox Pro just came out with these. There's some other companies making them. Heck, if you're an elk caller and you got an elk diaphragm in your pocket or a turkey collar that's not got a lot of cuts in it. Um, these are cool little calls. So I'm going to start off with just basically a, a, a lone howl, give you an idea of what that sounds like. It's pretty much the most basic call um, 
you just do it a couple of times and sit quiet and uh, let them try to come in. So here's the lone howl. Really, that's, that, that's, that's pretty basic right there. Anybody can do that with a little bit of practice. Um, and, it's, and it's an effective call for, for breeding season or locating even when you're out trying to find coyotes. Another really good weapon to use here is a, a female challenge howl. Um, probably um, after the lone howl, the female challenge is basically the, the main sound that I make with this diaphragm call. And it's just a, a quick chop and a little bit of a, a rasp after that. And that just is kind of an alarmed, mad female. A lot of times, if you got a couple of coyotes hung up, um, that'll really tick off the female, and she'll come charging in. Um, try to get, you know, she's going to come in looking for a fight. So, so just be ready for them to come in pretty fast when you do that sound. Um, another thing you can do with this, and it's uh, a real good, real good tool after the shot when you're, you know, you're you're trying to get back on maybe a second coyote that's in the sequence is throw a little pup distress at them. That'll that'll maybe stop that second coyote for you, and it's real easy to do with this diaphragm sound. And that's just putting your tongue tight against the call. Um, and quick bursts of air. Um, just takes a little bit of practice. These are not for everyone, but guys that know how to use a diaphragm call, it's certainly a really good tool to have in your belt. All right, so now we've touched on some of the hand calls. Let me, uh, let me show you a little bit on an electronic call as far as, you know, just what I use. I have a CS24 Fox Pro. I also have a Shockwave. Um, these are two of the top of the line Fox Pro calls that they offer. Um, getting started, you probably don't need to uh, step out there and spend $600 on a call, but if that's your thing, you wanna have the best gadgetry, and the best weapons in your arsenal, you can't go wrong with these high-end calls. Fox Pro does offer a call, an introductory call for $100. Comes with 35 sounds on it. You know, that's adequate for a guy getting started. And that way you don't spend a lot of money trying to get started. But man, I'm telling you, once you do it and you're successful using these techniques, you're going to want to be doing it every weekend and every second that you can because there's not really a whole lot more exciting than bringing a coyote into the call. Okay, so th these calls are pretty pretty basic um, just so you can understand how they work. Um, you've got a select button. And you can find your sounds that you want. You know, this, this call happens to be loaded with about 500 sounds. Um, plenty to call coyotes. You really, you really don't need as many as I've got here, but sure it's fun to have the diversity and be able to use different sounds for sure. Uh, but you just go through, the, go through the motions, find the sound you want. Here's some rabbit sounds. Scroll down on the screen, pick your sound. Everybody seems to like these jackrabbit sounds. We'll go with lightning jack. That's the most famous of all Fox Pro sounds. Pick that sound, call will start playing. I, uh, I use these just about the same sequence as I do my hand calls. Uh, some guys will run them full time while they're calling. Me, I'll run them for a couple minutes, turn them off for a minute. Run them a couple minutes, turn them off for a couple minutes. You know, and depending on where you're at, cool thing about these, they got a little timer on them. So you, can, you know exactly how long you're sitting on set. And then another neat thing is, uh, you can you can see exactly how long it took for the coyote to come in so cool piece of technology you'll love to have it if you uh, want to go that route like i said hand calls electronic calls just get yourself out there and call some coyotes now there's there's four seasons in the year but in my mind i personally only hunt coyotes three seasons i leave them alone in the summertime there are guys that hunt them in the summertime but i'm basically going to talk to you about fall winter and spring strategies. Um, fall strategies, 
you know, I do a lot of predator distress sounds. Um, the pups are still young. In some cases, they haven't been dispersed yet. You know, the, you're still working on their, their stomachs. They're, they're trying to get ready for winter time. They're, you know, the pups are getting cast out in some places, some places they're not, so they need to eat a lot, you know? So a good rabbit distress sound is, is gonna be your best bet. It, when those pups are getting dispersed, they're hungry and they don't necessarily know how to hunt really well for themselves. Or if the family groups are still intact and they're going into the fall, they're gonna be hungry. There's plenty of them in the group. So that, that food sound is number one for me. All right, now it's winter time and you've got plenty of time on your hands to go call some coyotes. Again, I like to start with a distress sound. Now when I first get to a stand and I'm, I'm just trying to determine whether coyotes are close, I may start real light with a rabbit call and just work up 30 seconds, pretty quiet, just in case something's in there close to me. I, uh, I don't wanna blow them out. After two or three minutes um, from that first call, I'll move into another louder series of calls. And a as I go through that, um, I increase my volume a little every time I'm calling. Um, if I'm using electronic, I'll run it up to say 30, 30 on the, uh, uh, on the, on the caller. Um, some, of the, some of the smaller Fox Pro calls, their max volume is 20. I might run those on you know, 15. You know, I, there's no real need unless you're in big wind to run that call on super high volume. Um, after, you know, say the 10 minute mark, if they haven't come in, um, that might be where I throw in a howl. And, and I might just throw in a female invitation howl. You know, one or two quick blasts um, and then sit. Um, let those coyotes get a chance to come in. They've, they've now heard that there's some food and now they think there might be another coyote in the area. If they're feeling a little bit territorial, they'll come in and check that out. It's springtime now and you, you're out calling some coyotes. They're starting to pair up with the breeding season. Um, this is when your howling is gonna be more critical. Now, I don't like to go in and just blast a group howl because that isn't necessarily what you're trying to portray. You're either trying to appeal to um, a single male looking for some love or a male and his mate and trying to pick a fight. But a lot of times those females are gonna be the more feisty ones. So just be ready for that female to be coming in fast. Um, I'll run some, some howling sequences. Um, like I said, the female invitation howl, male challenge howl, uh, some of those sort of things if I'm running electronic. Otherwise, you might be able to throw in a, a, a pair howl. You know, those work really effectively during the springtime when the, the coyotes are pairing up for breeding. Um, after I run some howls, during the springtime, I will appeal to their stomach again if they haven't come in. You know, maybe they're sitting out there, they're, they're watching, they've heard the howling, they're looking around for you. Um, you throw a little bit of a distress sound at them, they'll come and check it out. Okay, you've gotten a little basic overview on how to call in a coyote. So you're sitting on your stand, you go through the, the calling sequences, and you got a coyote there. You know, the first one that comes in for you, you're gonna be excited as hell, and you're gonna be shaking, that's where those shooting sticks come into play. You're gonna really be glad you have them at this point. So the coyote's coming in and he gets to that 100 yard mark. If a coyote gets to 100 yards, I kill him because anything can go wrong from that 100 yards and in. They can get out of sight of you trying to cut the wind. You know, you, there's a little fold in your setup that you didn't know was there and a the coyote gets in it. Next thing you know, you're panicked and he's gone. So, a rule of thumb for me, if a coyote gets in to 100 yards and closer, I shoot him right there. Um, that maybe is not gonna work for everybody. My personal preference, that's the way it goes. Um, so you shot the coyote and he's got a buddy coming in with him. You really wanna be quick to get on that pup to stress or some sort of sound that's gonna make that coyote stop. Um, a lot of guys, especially guys with ARs, will just start flinging lead at those running coyotes. You know, as you get into this, you're gonna learn coyote body language. And that's really critical to pay attention to that because a lot of times, if you don't just open up on them and start shooting like crazy, you're going to be able to stop that coyote and have a, 
much higher percentage shot shooting at a coyote that's standing still than running off. Um, I have it as a rule that if guys are hunting with me that we don't shoot at running coyotes unless we're in a contest because otherwise you just educate them and it gives them a chance to, you know, get smart and that makes it a lot harder to call them in the next time you come back to that setup. So real critical, get on a sound that's going to try to stop them. And like I said, pup distress is really, really a, a great weapon to use on that. Your Fox Pros will come with Fox Bang if you get the higher end models. Um, otherwise, have it programmed in as one of your quick go-to sounds. And uh, that'll be a sound that's just going to stop those coyotes and, and make it ready for a shot for them um, on the exit. Well, I really hope you learned something from this. In the description below, you're going to have three links you can click. One will be the equipment that I use. Two will be an advanced online course. And three, you can come hunting with me for a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time.